can you see the presentation nick I think you might be on mute. Yeah, I can see it. All oh. good. Yeah. Great. Okay, so Nick, we've been given the go ahead. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome everyone to today's uh, presentation with EU Business School. Uh, just to introduce myself, I'm Shanice Francis. I'm the Regional Recruitment Manager for EU Business School. Uh, and I've been working with EU Business School now for close to five years. Uh, over to you, Nick. Thanks, Janice. Uh, great to be um, with you virtually, at least. My name is uh, Nick Coles. I'm Head of Sales and Recruitment. Uh, I've worked with EU for 10 years and, and worked really closely with Janice for the last five as well. Um, we both very familiar with um, the Indian market, obviously, and many of the questions you as potential students have. Our objective today is to simply introduce some of you to EU Business School. You may not uh, know too much about the institution itself, so we'll give you a brief, a brief um, introduction to the, to, to, the, to the business school, our campuses, our programs, and then really give you the opportunity uh, to ask us any questions you may have. Um, we'd be happy to answer and to help you uh, start the application process as well. It's a very exciting uh, period now as Europe moves out of um, a difficult era. Obviously, for, for, for everyone, it's been tough. Uh, but we're really seeing a, a, lot, a real spike in interest for, for our programs. We've got some really exciting new programs, which we'll mention to you. Um, so, yeah, let's, let's get stuck into the, to the presentation. Over to you, Shanice. Thanks, Nick. Thanks once again for the introduction. Uh, so I don't know if we're going to be able to play the short video. I'm going to try. Um, I don't think we can. Okay, I'll just put it in the chat box maybe. And we can probably show it. We have a YouTube link, so we're going to show this to you at the end of the presentation. Um, in terms of our location, has uh, you know, uh, EU Business School is located in four uh, campuses in four uh, different uh, cities across Europe. We have the Munich campus in Germany, the Geneva and the Montreux campus in Switzerland, and we also have the Barcelona campus in Spain. As you can see, these campuses are very closely located to one another. Nick personally is sitting at the Geneva campus in Switzerland, and each campus is about an hour's flight away from one another. So great proximity and very close proximity between all the four campuses. Um, we just want to show you pictures of the campuses and talk a little bit about the location. So in Barcelona, we have the Diagonal and the Grandio campus. The Diagonal campus on the left-hand side is our main campus, and we occupy the entire building. Uh, it is very closely located to uh, one of the FC Barcelona stadiums. Uh, the Grandio campus is mostly used for our language classes and, um, you know, our summer school programs as well. Um, these campuses are very centrally located, as I mentioned, and very close to the uh, shopping district as well. Uh, our camp accommodation is off campus right now within 10 to 15 minutes walking distance from campus. Um, in terms of Geneva, it's a place that holds a, a very special place in my heart because I personally graduated from the Geneva campus. Um, and it's very closely located to uh, River Ron and the Jado, which is the highest fountain in the world, uh, surrounded by a lot of cafes and restaurants as well, very closely located to the train station. Uh, Montreux, on the other hand, is one of our boutique campuses, again, located along the same river, River Ron, and um, very closely located to the city center. Montreux has a city is very famous for the Montreux Jazz Festival. So over to you, Nick. I think you would love to talk about Munich and the kind of opportunities Munich has to present. Sure. Thanks a lot, Shanice. Uh, yes, Munich is definitely the one which we would highlight as a, as a really exciting opportunity at this stage. Um, Munich uh, provides our students with um, a fantastic location, first and foremost. Uh, unemployment in the city of Munich is, is one of the lowest in Europe. So if you are considering uh, higher education, uh, as a springboard to a potential career, um, then Munich is, is probably the best city in Europe to aim for. 
obviously there are many other exciting cities um, in Germany and um, in, in Europe, like Paris and in, in France and, and capital cities and other in other countries in Europe. But Munich has a fantastic balance between work uh, and, and uh, a really dynamic economy as well as, uh, you know, an outdoor lifestyle. So you have uh, the countryside just outside the city. You've got mountains, lakes, rivers. It's very beautiful. And uh, if you have a need for uh, an intake of nature, then you'll certainly appreciate everything that Munich has to offer. Um, one thing I would mention about Munich is how uh, dynamic the, the economy is. Uh, we're seeing a lot of investment from uh, big uh, tech firms, um, there's Microsoft, um, there's um, as well as Amazon, which is doing a lot of um, training as well. They've got a big training center there. We've got Amazon uh, Cloud Services, which is uh, a huge, has a huge center as well in the city of Munich. And we'll talk more about, uh, about Amazon later. Um, what else does Munich have to offer? Um, every year there's a huge, um, uh, you know, beer festival, which brings a lot of tourism into the city. So it's a very uh, well visited city. So the hospitality industry is really uh, huge there. You've got a big tech sector, as I said, as well as a lot of startups. So we're seeing uh, a lot of our students finding jobs in, in, in firms that are aiming to, to work internationally as well. Um, so as an Indian student, if you speak obviously good English and you have a bit of basic German, Munich is a really great city to, to start your career in. When it comes to our campus, we've got a campus located downtown, uh, not far from uh, the city center. So uh, you'll have, um, you'll really be in the heart of the city. Uh, that's great for the company visits and uh, it just really, you know, being well positioned uh, to, to look for employment and to get the most out of the city. So. This is a photo of our campus. We have um, expanded it in the last few years. We currently have about 600 students, five, 600 students that are studying uh, full-time with us. Um, it's very modern facilities, huge glass panes going out onto, with views out onto where the Oktoberfest uh, is, is held every year. State-of-the-art um, equipment in, in all the classrooms as well. Got a nice uh, student room and library. Um, it's, a, it's a really great uh, location. So. You'll enjoy that a lot. Um, over to you, Shanice. Thanks, Nick. Thank you, Nick. Um, so in terms of uh, the current, keeping in mind the current situation that you know we're going through uh, worldwide uh, in terms of COVID has the pandemic, um, we're happy to inform you that we have been back on campus ever since October 2020, and we are conducting classes on campus in a hybrid mode wherein 50% of our classes are happening on campus and 50% online. Uh, as you can see, we're maintaining social distancing as well. We have sanitizers all over campus, uh, temperature sensor cameras. Uh, we even have a, a campus doctor available if need be. Um, and what we have received news of is from October or from July onwards, we could have 100% attendance on campus specifically in Munich because this has been the go-ahead from the Bavarian Ministry. Uh, so we will be conducting classes 100% on campus um, in Munich uh, as of July 2021. Um, in terms of why students choose EU, I think it's very important to know basically the details. And as a former alumni, I would like to tell you that EU Business School has an array of international students coming from over 100 different nationalities. Uh, I think the fact that you can transfer between campuses really makes uh, the entire process really um, you know, convenient, easy, and fun as well to explore a new city, a new culture, um, and a new country in general. Uh, very small class sizes, so the dynamics of the class is 1 is to 30, uh, wherein um, you have a maximum of 30 students. And as you go into your specialization, your class size keeps decreasing. Um, I think the small class camp sizes also help uh, in, uh, you know, in bonding of students and, uh, you know, getting to know your professor better as well. Uh, all our courses are taught in English, um, which is easy for everyone to understand. Uh, you have a lot of uh, case studies, a lot of presentations, a very pragmatic approach towards studying. It's not all theory, but it is also, it can be presentations or case studies as well. Uh, which makes uh, the program a lot more pragmatic, as I mentioned before. 
um, outstanding faculty. Our faculty not only teaches at EU Business School, but we also have um, you know professors that are um, counsel uh, you know uh, counseling other firms or they run their own private firms, uh, which is really unique in a way because you get firsthand approach of what's happening uh, in the market, and it's not only about uh, you know books and uh, uh, you know the theoretical matter. It's a lot to do with the practical um, uh, practical learning approach as well. In terms of specialization, we have uh, mostly management based courses. And we have recently entered uh, into techno management courses as well, which we will talk about later at both an undergraduate and postgraduate uh, level. Um, our network is huge. We have 27,000 plus alumni across the globe. And in, you know, over the next few slides, you're going to see the kind of guest speakers that we get on campus, which really enhances the network quality and the kind of uh, you know, people uh, and stature of people that our students really interact with. Uh, on a day-to-day -day or a weekly basis for that matter. In terms of our rankings and uh, ratings, we have a 42nd ranking when it comes to the EU European MBA rankings for 2021, according to QS. A lot of our students, about 20% of our students go on to becoming entrepreneurs and starting their own business. And hence we've been ranked 30th according to the EU startups. Um, and with the current, uh, you know, inflow of students for the online program or the hybrid program, as we call it, we have been ranked 11th when it comes to the EU online MBA ranking as well. As I mentioned before, we've had a lot of guest speakers over the last few years, and we continue having them on campus. Uh, right now, we are, uh, you know, um, inviting them in a virtual environment. Uh, but, uh, you know, once things go back to normal, students can meet these uh, defined individuals in person. We've had the CEO of Doha Bank, uh, the country head of Google for Luxembourg and Belgium, um, the, the chief operator for uh, the hotel Four Seasons. Uh, and these are real connections that you can carry forward with. Uh, Nick, I'm sure you would like to add something in terms of the guest speakers that we have. Sure. Uh, I think when, when considering a, an institution, there are several um, factors that most people look at. They look at rankings very quickly. They look at um, obviously the program portfolio. Um, in my opinion, one thing you should, well, the two things you should really add to the list is, is location and then network. So location, I don't think EU Business School could have a more exciting offering in terms of uh, being in, in Barcelona in Spain, Munich in Germany, and then our two prestigious campuses in Switzerland, Geneva and Montreux. So that's the first thing. What are the economic possibilities in the city? Are there job opportunities? Is the city a great city to live in as well? And I think those boxes are ticked. When it comes to networking and opportunities, EU really aims to uh, position our students uh, well in terms of the exposure they get. Um, uh, much of what we're aiming at is, uh, is a pragmatic approach and to really uh, equip our students to be practitioners of business. Uh, there's no point in gaining all this technical, all this theoretical knowledge if you're unable to, to put that into practice. Um, so hearing stories from top level managers, people like uh, the CEO of Adeco, which is a, a huge uh, human resource uh, company, uh, or you know the Mahindra Group, obviously based in Mumbai in India, a global, a global uh, group, Mahindra, and then Nestle. Nestle is based out of Switzerland, obviously, and everyone knows Nestle products. So to hear... Um, business people and CEOs, top managers, uh, describe how they uh, were, you know, juniors at some stage and how they worked their way up in their company. Hearing tips, insights, these things are invaluable, really, for your career. Not only that, you also get to to network, and I think um, this is what we what we're really trying to underline by this learning from leaders series. Uh, you as a, as a student will have access to these uh, exclusive talks. We here see here Bill and Melinda Gates, Gavi, uh, see uh, the Pe PepsiCo, the CEO of uh, PepsiCo has joined us as well. We've had more talks more recently. Uh, one of the other uh, things that we focused on recently is how to equip our students to get hired in Germany. Um, so we've had talk, you know, we've had uh, panelists from Infineon, obviously the, the big tech uh, chip manufacturing firm. Uh, Odgers and Bernstein, he's a top level HR person who, who joined us recently. So this was our first in a three series installment during the, during the spring. All of our students, prospective students have joined these calls. 
And uh, we actually have one next week, which, uh, well, on the 8th of July, so it's upcoming. And uh, I would invite anyone to, to join that session as well. We'll be talking about how to uh, develop skills for the future. What, what are HR people looking at at the moment? So really, I think the focus at EU is to provide you with outstanding uh, opportunities to learn from outside people, from practitioners. And uh, this you will not find at every other business school. This is something that EU is really proud about and something we can uh, put forward as a USP for you as, a, as, as, a, um, as international students. Thanks, Thanks for that insight. Yeah. I'm just going to carry on. Um, in terms of accreditations, we have the American accreditation, which is the ACBSP, uh, to European accreditations, which is the ICBE and the ICOA Seaman. And the EDIQA is a mark of uh, quality granted to us by the Swiss government. Um, in terms of our academic partners, we have academic partners from uh, Spain, the UK, uh, even Ireland now. Uh, so we have UCAM, which is a Spanish uh, partner. The University of Derby and University of Bohampton are both UK-based partners. And we have Dublin Business School, which is an Irish partner, which whom we have recently signed a partnership with. Um, in terms of our programs, we have both bachelor and postgraduate programs. At a bachelor level, we have seven different specializations. All our bachelor programs are three-year programs with six semesters. Uh, and I think what is really interesting is that during the first year, students have core management courses. And from the second year onwards, you can really look into your uh, major, which could either be communications and PR, sports management, uh, business finance, or if you're looking at more techno management courses, uh, you're looking at cloud computing, information systems, project management has pathways. Um, and this decision can be taken once you're on campus. And if you decide to switch between uh, business finance and go into information systems, that's always a possibility from the second year onwards. Um, in terms of the uh, admission criteria, we require your high school mark sheets, proof of English proficiency, which would be the TOEFL uh, overall score of 80, IELTS an overall score of 6.0, uh, we now also accept Duolingo with an overall score of 95. Uh, if uh, any of you have not attended the above, um, you know, above test, which is the TOEFL IELTS or Duolingo, we will, um, you know, subject you to an internal English test, uh, which is conducted online. Uh, post completion of that program, uh, of that test and, uh, you know, passing it successfully, we will be conducting an ad admissions interview as well. Two letters of recommendation is compulsory, a written or video essay, which is a topical essay, passport, digital photograph, and financial solvency form. Um, in case you're applying for the bachelor's, these are all the documents that you will need to submit um, in order to go ahead with your application process. We also have an executive bachelor's program. Uh, this does not apply to every student that's applying for a bachelor's program. These are very rare cases in which students have completed uh, the 12th grade uh, and wanna move on uh, to studying uh, or have moved on to working. Uh, and after completing uh, five years of work experience and being about 25 years of age, they can apply to the one-year executive bachelor's in business administration program and then move on to an MBA uh, or a master's program for that matter. Coming to our master's programs, we do have a lot of students applying to our postgraduate programs, um, be it the master's or the MBA for that matter. Uh, all these programs are one year programs with three semesters. Uh, the master's program is very different from the MBA mm -hmm. programs because the master's clearly special, you know, focuses on your specialization. Uh, so if you as a student are going in for digital business has a specialization, you will only be looking at digital business related courses. Um, this is a 60 credit program um, with three semesters and it is a dual degree program of EU Business School and the University of UCAM. We also have the MBA. The MBA program is a 90 credit program um, and very similar to the bachelor's during the first two semesters, uh, you have your co-management program uh, in which you go through different business management courses. And in your last semesters, when you will be focusing on your specialization or your major. 
We do also have techno management pathways, which are cloud computing and project management, which is a new addition to the portfolio. And we're very excited because a lot of students coming from an engineering background really prefer to go into um, you know, a, a, a lot of techno management courses like cloud computing and information systems. Um, you know, and what really adds uh, to all of this is the new AWS program, which we'll be talking about in a bit. Uh, but it really, uh, you know, adds value to your CV as well. In terms of the admission criteria, we have we required the uh, bachelor degree and mark sheets. We do understand that many of you haven't received your bachelor degree due to the onset delays by universities. So even if you have your mark sheets, you can submit those in. Online application form will be filled in by ESC. A copy of your CV, two letters of recommendation, a written or video essay. Solvency form that needs to be signed by your sponsor, passport copy and digital photograph. For the same with the English um, test, if none of you have TOEFL, IELTS or Duolingo, we will be accepting the EU online English test as well. We also have a couple of intakes. So upcoming intakes would be the October intake that we're concentrating on. As I mentioned earlier, and I would like to repeat, is that the Munich campus is now going to be open from July onwards for 100% uh, online, I mean, sorry, on-campus classes, which is going to be really exciting to have all our students on campus. Um, and we uh, do foresee the uh, German uh, embassy opening up by the beginning of July for student visas as well. Um, the German visas have, or the consulate has already opened up in Mumbai, uh, and we do, do see the other consulates as well uh, opening up or reopening in India. Nick, would you like to introduce the AWS uh, summer courses that we are offering right now at Munich? Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Janice. So I think what I, what I mentioned earlier was uh, Munich being a hub for, um, for tech, uh, big tech firms like Apple as well, which is... Uh, recently um, uh, invested a lot of money if you look online they invested a billion dollars which is uh, which is quite significant in terms of uh, developing a uh, a factory a chip manufacturing um, plant in the city of munich and we've got colleagues that, that are looking to to move to munich uh, former students uh, that are involved with with all these different projects and all the investment going on in the city one thing we have uh, learned as well is that um, there is a need for talent, uh, certainly with, uh, with an IT background, people that have some uh, core skills and are ready to, to hit the workforce, you know. So we're excited to offer this year for the first time uh, these AWS uh, courses. And we'll be doing that in June and July and August. I think it's July and August. Where we've got a foundation course and then we've got an architecting uh, course as well. So if we move on to the next slide, you'll see uh, these are the two options that we, we're offering at the moment. Um, the first one is, uh, you know, both programs would normally cost 300 each. Um, and we we having a special price uh, where students can uh, attend these classes for, for 540 for both courses. Um, they run for two weeks, as you can see. The first one, the Climb Foundations course, is running from the nineteenth to of July to the sixth of August, and then the the Cloud Architecting um, uh, course runs from the sixteenth of August to the seventeenth of September. So, what what we really focusing on on these courses is providing, um, you know, Amazon with with a pool of talent ready. So you um, will have a, a, an additional qualification, uh, which will make you far more employable. Um, why is this a special opportunity as well? Because we are the only university or institution offering this uh, private institution in Munich at this stage. So we're already excited to partner with Amazon Web Services and um, this is a great plus. So many of you that are considering, uh, you know, joining this October, this would be something to look at for um, the year 2022. So yeah, moving on. Thanks, Nick. Uh, moving sure. on to the tuition fee structure uh, and uh, the scholarship options that we also have. So in terms of the tuition fee structure, if you're looking at a bachelor's program, the one year tuition fee, which includes two semesters, is approximately 12,900 euros. Uh, in Indian rupees, that would be approximately 12 lakhs. Uh, for the Geneva and the Montreux campus, the one year tuition fee is 27,600 
uh, Swiss francs, approximately 25 lakhs in Indian rupees. At a master's level, the 60 credit program, which focuses, focuses on your specialization, that is 13,800 at both the Barcelona and the Munich campus, approximately about 12 and a half lakhs in Indian rupees. And the Geneva and the Montreux campus uh, tuition fee structure is 28,800 euro, uh, Swiss francs, sorry, which is approximately 25 lakhs in Indian rupees. The MBA program is 20,850 euros for the one year three semester program. And that comes up to approximately 18 lakhs in Indian rupees. And at Geneva and Montreux in Switzerland, um, the total tuition fee structure is 37,800 Swiss francs, which is approximately 35 lakhs in Indian rupees. As mentioned, we do have a few scholarship options, especially at a postgraduate program. We have been helping students to start their uh, studies and not stop them from their studying due to the pandemic that's ongoing. Uh, as Nick rightly mentioned, with Europe opening up so smoothly uh, and uh, you know visas being granted, um, I think it's time that students look at their future and, and start applying for the program, uh, specifically why we have the EU care scholarship specifically for our MBA programs. It's a 50% reduction on the first semester tuition fees. Uh, we do assess your file uh, as well as an additional scholarship essay that will need to be provided by you in order to apply for the scholarship. Uh, for master's and bachelor students, we do have a merit-based scholarship. Uh, this scholarship is mostly focused on bachelor students, not so much on master's. Uh, but if you're interested in applying for the scholarship, it could be up to 30% on the one-year tuition fees. Um, and the requirements are 80% in the 12th grade or 70% in bachelor's. We are also looking at your IELTS course, which is either 6.5 overall for bachelor's or 7 overall for an MBA and the EU internal English test will also be counted, um, as well as a Skype interview with one of our scholarship committee members as well. Uh, moving on, I think Nick's the expert because he's spoken to so many students over the years who have successfully continued living and working in Munich and just generally in Germany. So yeah, over to you, Nick. Thanks, Janice. Yeah, so just to, Highlights, I, I think what Shanice mentioned a, a minute ago with the scholarships, we we really are um, excited uh, about what's available this year. Both of us can tell you that we've never offered scholarships to this extent. So if you are interested in starting your studies, I would say you should apply now. Um, we have a, a deadline for the EU CARES, which is uh, coming up to the end of this month. So I would say if you are interested in, in applying, certainly for the MBA program, you need to get your application in in the next week uh, for the EU CARES. Uh, there's no EU CARES scholarship going on into 2022. So it, it's really the opportunity now. Um, it, it basically equates to about almost three and a half thousand euros uh, reduction on your first term. So it's a huge amount uh, taken off on that first term. Uh, we would have a scholarship interview with you as well for that MBA program scholarship. Uh, but definitely, if you're interested, you would need to apply this next week. When it comes to the masters and the, the bachelors, I would say we also have a, a limited number. Um, we've actually got seven merit-based scholarships available for, for South Asia. So don't uh, wait. I think we might have three or four still available for, for this year. So you would need to move ahead very quickly. So I just wanted to add, uh, Shani's covered everything uh, that, that we offer for the scholarships, but uh, don't wait. Uh, sometimes in the Indian market, we've noticed students like waiting for the last minute and hoping to still benefit. I can guarantee you that these uh, scholarships will be used and quickly. Um, so yeah, you need to you need to move ahead quickly. Yeah, coming to the career services, it's very linked to what we offer in the city. Once again, the advantages of Munich, uh, the advantages of Barcelona, even even to a large extent Switzerland, with it being such an innovative country with a dynamic economy as well, uh, the, the job opportunities are there. So what we try to do is, from a careers perspective, really assist you and equip you to be better at looking for employment. Uh, the career services are not there to uh, give you things on a, uh, on a silver platter. What we can do is connect you with industry. We can help you with your CV. We can coach you, do mock interviews, uh, set up how you know to optimize your LinkedIn profile. These things are very important, especially in Germany. 
Um, and, it, you know, Munich itself has a very low unemployment rate. As I mentioned, 3.3% is, is the Bavarian state, probably even lower in, in, in Munich. 95% of our students that are currently uh, finishing are working in Germany itself. Uh, Shanice and I have access to a database of, of uh, a large number of students that are currently living and working in Germany. So, you know, the stat here was 93 students were placed, but I can tell you many more are currently working uh, in, in Germany in and around the, the city of Munich. The average salary in Munich is 4,200 euros. Minimum salary, most of our students are getting is about 2,700 euros. I don't know if, Shanice, you just want to uh, translate that into, um, uh, convert that into Indian rupees. Yeah, so uh, 2,700 euros would be approximately about 3, uh, 3.5 lakhs in Indian rupees. Um, and uh, for the euros, for 4,200 euros would be approximately about uh, 4, and, uh, 4 lakhs and 1,000 oh, yeah. per month is what we're looking at from an average salary perspective. Um, just one thing that I would like to add on is also based on our statistics and the, the number of students that we've spoken to, uh, those that have taken educational loans are, were able to repay the education loans within the first year and a half itself after completion, or completing the graduation and getting an internship um, and a job in Europe. Um, the reason why we also focus on internships so much is because, uh, you know, uh, even if you've had work past work experience, a lot of companies grant you an internship first uh, to really test the waters and see how you are as a, you know, as a future employee um, and then uh, sort of convert you into a contract uh, job, uh, I would say a permanent job um, at the end of the three months of the internship. Correct me if I'm wrong, Nick, but that's uh, sort of the conversation we've had with our careers. No, absolutely. No, absolutely. And I think what uh, what is very important is once again uh, looking at location. If you if you come uh, if you compare Berlin, which is a very popular uh, study destination in India at the moment for for students wanting to go to Germany, uh, the average salary in in Berlin you're looking closer to fifty k a year. Um, whereas in, in you know you're looking at thirty to forty percent higher in Munich. Uh, so you know that that is really important when you're looking uh, to start a career um, and your job prospects are you know I think I think what's also important is that there's such a rush for Berlin uh, that the the market is certainly a lot more crowded than if you you focus on uh, a city like uh, like Munich. So Munich, you know, if you don't know, it's in southern Germany. It's part of the biggest state and the most uh, economically um, um, affluent state as well. So Bavaria is definitely a place to be. It's, it's uh, considered a magnet across Europe, especially in Germany. People, many people migrate to the city of, uh, of, of Munich for you know, many different reasons, certainly for employment possibilities. So I think this really, we're really trying to underline all the, the advantages. You know, this slide just shows where our students are currently working. Uh, we haven't chosen these companies uh, by chance. These are really where we've got names of students that are currently uh, pursuing careers. So you'll recognize a lot of uh, financial firms like Allianz, which is a huge uh, re uh, you know, insurance company. One which we didn't mention there is one of the biggest reinsurance firms in, in Europe is based in, in Munich itself as well. Um, but then, yeah, the techno firms, uh, techno, technology management companies and uh, like uh, Microsoft, Infosys, Google, Infineon, uh, we've got Amazon, which isn't there, but we've got students that are working there as well. Um, you've got the automotive industry, BMW, Mercedes, um, so a, a lot of different, uh, tech, uh, you know, uh, sectors and um, a big massive firms that are employing our students. These stats, I'll just share it with Shanice, but basically these are key, some of the key facts that we'd like you to remember from, from this presentation. Um, if you look at the bottom line, I think I'll just jump there immediately. Very high success uh, uh, rate in terms of placement, 96 uh, companies visited every year. So in 2019, we visited uh, 51 companies. Obviously, 2020 was different, but we aspire in 2021, 22 to visit as many companies. So that's almost one company a week. Um, job opportunities posted on our internal portal. You're looking at almost 400 different job uh, opportunities that were posted in the last year. And then the average salary, uh, as we've mentioned a lot, uh, is um, we're really proud of our alumni. 
We've recently uh, released a book, uh, you know, just featuring uh, the top um, profiles per sector as well. So.